All right, how to make a Big Mac. And not act like a twat in the meantime, right? So, welcome everybody. Cheers. Yep, that's right. I now look like a Lego man. That's what I look like. I'm either a Lego man, or if you were to change me into a Guess Who character, I'd be a Guess Who character. You know, beard, ching, crazy haircut, bing. There you go. Anyway, welcome, Lego hair, coffee. I'm going to show you how to make a Big Mac today. Um, basically because the whole of England, uh, and I think a lot of the world, has lost their shit and started queuing up for McDonald's. I'm not against McDonald's. I like McDonald's. I don't like what they stand for. I don't like what they do to me. I'm not going to lie. I've eaten a lot of McDonald's over the years and I've always found it reasonably tasty. It's always been a letdown. I mean, my expectations are a lot higher than the actual product, but Maybe wrong. I get stuck in another country, I'm traveling, I can't be asked. <sighs> a couple of cheeseburgers, Big Mac, I'm there. So they're doing something right. The flavor's in there, all right? And slightly addictive. Like we all know, we're pretty sure they got some crack going in there. Give yourself a crack burger. In fact, my good mate at Stockpot Kitchens, if you get down there now, they'll give you a crack chicken burger. So they've got it sorted. Anyway, back to it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it from scratch. This is Lauren's idea, my lovely wife, because she, she loves takeaway. She refuses to eat anything and has done for years, but isn't a sustainable, uh, welfare, non-corporation, basically. She, she's a bit of a hippie, but she's lovely. And she forces me into a lot of stuff. She's been really good. So we're gonna make it all from scratch. It's gonna be nice, but I'm still gonna make it. It's not, it's not gonna be a healthy meal. So don't go, this isn't like a healthy channel. It's gonna be a Big Mac, but you've made it yourself. You'll feel really good about it. And it will probably look a lot more like the picture than it does on the thing, as opposed to what you get when you open the box and stuff. So, we're going to make burger buns for it. So we're going to make special Big Mac burger buns, which we're going to get on to now. I'm going to mince my own beef uh, and make some burger patties, because I'm pretty sure their burger patties don't have much in them. So I'm going to go quite thin and just beef. We're going to make a dressing, so we're going to make the Big Mac sauce. And chop up some lettuce, some onions and some pickles. Oh, I'd love to show you pickling. But it's not that hard. I'm not doing another pickling video. I might even do one for you. But anyway, you have your own pickles, brilliant. I'm actually going to use some shop bought pickles because I've already got them. Okay? Um, there we go. We're going to put it together. I'll do some chips and I'll probably do some little meals for some people around the estate that I can pick up later in the week. So they have to go queue up for McDonald's. So I can make them up here in bags and we'll do our own little takeaway. We'll get on to that. First things first, we've got to make some bread. Uh, some bread rolls, to be fair. So I'll change the camera angle and get back to you. Okay, like loads of things, making bread, it's gonna be very simple. It's just a sweeter bread, because like everything at McDonald's has just got sugar in. So let's go. So, I'm making enough to make, what am I gonna make? I'm gonna make 16 Big Macs, okay? So you can half this and make eight. You can quarter it, and make four, and let you do the rest of the mash yourself. So, 680 ml of warm water here, into that. Going 120 grams of sugar. Way more sugar than I'd ever go in a bread. It's, it's, but they're sweet rolls, you know they're sweet, they're fine. 12 teaspoons of dried yeast. It's a lot of yeast. It's a lot of yeast too, so it's a yeasty, a sweet yeasty bread. So you put both of them in the warm water and give them a bit of a mix. What that's gonna do, obviously the yeast is, needs and loves a bit of sugar to get fed. So the warm water and the yeast. They're all right together, sugar. Party started! Whoop, whoop, whoop! Anyway, enough of that. That's a, we want that to get nice and foamy, not just foamy because you whisked it, foamy because it becomes alive and starts crawling up the side of the container. So we want to see a good inch of foam up the side of this container, back to here, before we even start dealing with that. Okay, then in, in the, the bowl, so we'll put in the old KitchenAid. So we'll put it in here, so this is, well, this is 1.4 kilos of uh, butter. One kilo and forty grams of. Um, yeah, is it meant to be that much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One kilo and forty grams of uh, bread flour, double O flour, strong flour. You know, the good stuff. Flour. That goes in here. Bread hook on. Um, a bit of salt's going to go in there, of course. 
put a pinch of your salt, wait for that to rise up. Once that's risen up, we're going to make some bread. It's as simple as that. Uh, once we've made that bread, we're going to—I'll I'll do it all in fast motion for you. Uh, I'm going to start slowly adding in. I've got two eggs to add in, and that liquid. Once that's all incorporated here, we're going to let it mix on the hook the, uh, for seven minutes. And once that seven minutes is done up, we're going to add another 160 grams of flour. What this does is, I've got no idea, but like people have told me to do it, so I'm going to do it, and we're going to have a look what's going on. There we go. We go another 60, 160 grams of flour. I'm going to mix it for another four minutes. So everything incorporated. Seven minutes of mixing. Then another 160 grams of flour. Everything mixing, and we're going to let it sort of prove in the actual uh, bowl today because I've got nothing else to make. Uh, so then once that sort of happened and out of the way, we're going to rest for 10 minutes on a, with a tea towel uh, and then we're going to divide the dough, um, sorry, uh, we're going to divide the dough into eight pieces, we're going to put them in the containers. I've actually got these cool sort of way of getting the burger bun bigger, so I'll show you that in a second, but anyway, let this rise and we'll get back on to you. Okay, so. We need to make some sort of collars, and these collars are going to be what's going to make the Big Mac buns rise bigger than a normal big uh, normal bun because you want a bit of height on them. So you want to cut some collars like this. They're like 40, 40 millimeters wide by three hundred and sixty millimeters long. We'll get you. This. Collar, whip your collar around and overdo until you think you get the size of a, a Big Mac bun, I suppose. You just want it enough so it's ripping. There we go. So, just enough to, to get the, the staples on. Give it a quick stapler. Eh? Make sure they're food grade staples. Just playing with you. There's no such thing. Don't go looking for them. And there's a collar. So, you want lot, you want. Many, I need 12 of these, so I'm going to make lots of these. Make lots of these, and that's what we're going to put our bread in. And that's going to give it that beautiful side, so you're going to so be able to cut your bread roll into three. All right, so I'm going to make all these. See you soon. Okay, so you can see this has risen up a little bit more than I wanted it to, but no worries about that. Turn the old machine on. We're going to do this, and then we're going to mix up. Gonna all go in there, little business. Should we get all that business in there? Two eggs. About 40 ml of oil. I've got olive oil here, not good olive oil, just olive oil. And you're gonna make this all, all to mix up and be good. Let's see what we can get over here. Okay, so make all this, sure all the stuff's off the side. We'll stop and give it a bit of a push down because it's uh, it'll all mix in eventually, but it's good to give it a little bit of a head start. Here we go. We're going to mix this for seven minutes, remember, at least. And then we're going to add the other 160 grams of flour and then see how we go for dough. But I'll get back to you in fast mode. Okay, so it's done, it's, um, excuse me. So I've mixed it for seven minutes, then added the extra flour, as you saw. It actually took a lot more flour. It's different days, different things, uh, uh, different moisture contents. So look, it needed a little bit more. And then we've got this, it's still a reasonably sticky dough. 
I just like to take it out and give it a quick work on a bench. It's very elastic. It's a very different dough than my normal bread doughs. So if you, you do make bread all the time, just know that it's a bit different. I'm just working this a little bit together, just so I can feel it. And I, I don't like using just a machine, otherwise I'm never gonna know what the bread's like. So, pulling the edge in. So you want a nice smooth dough, keep going. I'm not gonna use the same bowl. I said I was gonna use the same bowl. It's just not neat enough for me. Hang on, do a quick work. Get that. And I'm gonna put that in a bowl. I'm gonna put a cloth on it. I'm gonna put it in a warm spot. And I'm only gonna leave it for oh, you know, about half an hour till it's sort of doubled in size. Not even doubled in size till it's grown a bit. You can see it's live. Then I'll show you how to divide and cook. Divide and conquer even. No, 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 cook definitely. Okay, so half an hour later. Fast forward in time, Woo! double in size. Nice dough, here we go. Now I quite simply need to divide this up into um, 16. So, I'm not getting too, too crazy with maths. I just want to ease into so you're looking for 230 gram portions is actually what you're after here. So you get these all into, I'll rip my scales over and we'll just check we're in, uh, we're in line. It should be. Anyway, do that. Uh, this one. Already some, some of these aren't gonna be spot on. Cool, so there's that. Get some scales quickly. And now it's all up, but I just disappear. We haven't got some burger part, I'm just disappearing on you. All right, so, scaly bird jangles, let's have a go. Yeah, perfect. All right, cool. So once you've got these, this one is so one, mine have gone to 150. So I've got 150, uh, 150 grams. Get yourself uh, your roll and just tucking it under, tucking it under, and that top's nice in there. And then roll it. And all you're doing with this is cup your hand, add a bit of pressure. It's a beautiful roll like that. Flatten it down a bit, just like that. And then, do, do, do. Actually, let's just move along, I've got wheels. Woo! So here's all my, all my cases. Flatten it out a little bit to sort of help it. Sit it inside one of these collars. You're probably best off sitting it in the collar. And then pushing it down. Beautiful, Bernard, beautiful. So I'm gonna go roll all these, fill up the collars, get back. Okay, so the buns have uh, risen and filled the collars, which is all you're really looking for. All right, so now a bit sticky, but give a little bit of the, no, they should all be full, they're all filled up, brilliant. So all we want to do is we've got some sesame seeds, because obviously it's on a sesame seed bun, we all know the jingle, um, and some egg wash. The egg wash for this, I've actually put water in without milk, um, just to try and, so it doesn't get too much colour, but it gets a bit of colour. So, I'm going to egg wash them all, put some sesame seeds on, and bake them in a hot oven. So we're talking uh, 200 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, and we should be good. All right, so all you're doing is giving these nice egg washing. 
on top like that. And you know what the top of a bun looks like. Get your sesame seeds on there, and we're good to go. Take the collars off, and what you've got here is a nice bread roll with a nice enough high side to actually make your Big Macs. To be fair, my collars were the most evenly placed things you've ever got, so I've got some weird looking shaped rolls here. But generally speaking, they're going to be all right. So that's it's a Big Mac roll, so it's got a nice big high side. You can cut it a few different ways, beautiful. Just taking all these off. Let them cool down. These do freeze well, so I'd slice them into your free bits and then freeze them. But uh, they're good as they are too, for a few days. Brilliant. All right, morning. Gonna crack on with the beef part and sauce part. The rest of the part's really easy. So we've done the burger buns. They're kicking back. Gotta do some beef mincing. I'm gonna be meat. Oh, Jesus. I'm gonna mince my own beef today. Uh, and a lot of days. Here's my, here's my mincer. And here's my beef. Lovely. All right. Beef for mincing. Wayward soldier. All right, let me get this. All right. So, beef for mincing. Um, for this, I'm going to use the top end of the sirloin. I'm actually using British white cattle. Uh, I've got good friends of ours, Rui. Uh, her parents uh, breed uh, white cattle in Wales, so we buy some beef off them once a year. I highly recommend any of you out there that like meat, uh, find yourself a, a farmer or a friend, and then go, look, what, you're selling boxes of meat, so then, you know, a couple of times a year, buy a box of meat straight off the farm. You know, the best thing about that is, you know how the animal's been treated, you have meat's not traveling all over the world in boxes coming, passing another ship from New Zealand coming this way. Anyway, support local farmers. That means in the same country as you. It doesn't mean the farmer next door. It means support British farmers, right? So just, just get on board, people. Anyway, I'm using the top, top side of, I'm sorry, Louis, the top end of the sirloin where it starts going into a, uh, a little bit fatty, it's got some beautiful, so it's like, it's a prime cut, but it's got a little bit, a couple of little bits of fat in there. I've definitely kept a few bits on the end, a few caps, just to help with it. I've got a sneaky suspicion, I know this is going to be crazy, you're not going to believe me, but McDonald's patties are pretty lean. I think they are just meat. I know they've got 100% beef patty and all that rubbish, we don't believe them. I think they are. I think they are a predominantly seasoned meat. So that's all I'm going to really do with them. Get it, geez. I'm gonna pat these down into things. I'm gonna make some sauce today too. Both of these are really easy, um, but we'll get back to it. So all I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna put this on um, time lapse so you can watch it mincing. Just gonna slowly start mincing this, and um, then once it comes out, I'm not really gonna do anything with it. I don't want to season the mince too much now, but I'll give, I'll give it a little bit of white pepper, tiny bit of salt, just make sure it's there, uh, and then I'm just gonna use a scoop. So I'm gonna use about, I think about a third of a cup scoop to get the right amount of meat for the patties and I'm gonna flatten them right out in between cling film or, or grease proof. Not sure what I'm gonna do there yet and we'll get onto it. Anyway, burgers right now. Right, here you go, the beautiful mincers curves. So the mince you do yourself is always gonna be very different. Um, it's just, just loose and beautiful. It's got that right fat content. You want enough fat so it's just not going to be a dry piece of meat. This is looking amazing. So I'm just going to do a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Here we go. That's it. Take the mince off there. That's all we're looking for. So now this is just my seasoned beef mince. 
<coughs> excuse me, was not coughing on the meat, of course. Um, Okay, there we go. And about a third of a third of a cup, but I'll show you the measure in a minute. And we're gonna be flattening them out into bits. Cool, cool. Okay, so how I quickly get these burgers out into a into a flat, into nice patties. Get your cling film out. Cut. I'm actually using a, a quarter cup scoop. So I get the same amount of meat in every one. Show off a quarter of a cup scoop, fill it right up. That there, go again the other side. There we go. It's two quarter cup scoops and a bit more cling film on top. This is a good one, these will be stored too, so I'll store them in this too. This is a uh, store in them as well. You can use grease proof paper for this job. I mean, just flatten them out. If you had a burger press, that would be brilliant. You could probably do this straight onto a if I had a barbecue plate and a, and a burger press, I'd probably do that. So make sure you got some, and I like to tuck them in at the edge, just so they're the right shape, so that when they cook, those little bits aren't just gonna fray off. And you gotta think a little bit bigger than the buns you make, because they are gonna shrink, because that's, that's what meat does when you cook it. So make them a bit perfect around. If there's any thin edges, just push down. Give them a, a trim inside. I trim the bags off because I don't need extra stuff. And we got these, so there, they can be froze like that, so little burger patties. That's one big max worth. And just stack them all up and keep going until you're finished. Okay, gonna make some sauce. Now this is, um, needs to be eaten on everything. Like, I mean, this is just burger sauce. It's obviously, we're gonna try and emulate the Big Mac sauce. Just a good burger sauce. I mean, our burger sauce here at Nolsey is, um, we use gherkin juice and jalapeno juice and sort of like make a mayonnaise of all that sort of stuff. And, and, and it's amazing. I'm gonna try and, I'm trying to keep this one as, as close to this as possible. So, stick with me here. This is as simple as it gets, peeps. You can't, you can't screw this up, even you peeps. Um, <clears throat> don't seem to have a whisk or anything. Two seconds, I'll be back. And he's back. All right, so, in here. I'm doing three times the recipe, but I'm gonna read you out one time the recipe. So three quarters of a cup of um, mayonnaise. I've got three of, three of the buggers. Um, yellow mustard. Frenchies is great, Frenchies is great, it's a great brand, it's, uh, I think it might even be America. Yeah, it is American, which is what you want. Um, so three quarters of a cup of mayo, one tablespoon of yellow mustard. I'm free timing it, and a little bit more. Like all sauces, this is gonna be your own sort of flavor base too, so don't, don't get too carried away if you're not. I mean, I've got this, this is Frenchies, um, Got my friends to get me some relish because I can't leave the estate and they managed to find French's gherkin or a sweet pickle relish or New, New York deli pickle, sorry. Um, so some sort of sweet pickle and if you can't, if you want to make this yourself, which is totally fine, it's basically vinegar, sugar, poured over bloody gherkins. So it's easy as hell. Anyway, so there we go. Three quarters of a cup of mayo, one tablespoon of yellow mustard, two tablespoons of this relish. One, two, one, Two, one, two. You can see that's got lots of bits of colours in. Um, that's just, if you've seen Big Mac sauce, it's got lots of bits in, so this is spot on. Fortunately, I'm gonna make this just like theirs. I'm gonna put a bit of sugar in, because everything's so bloody sweet. We don't need much. We actually need two teaspoons for the recipe, so six teaspoons of that. I can't even bring myself to put it all in. Actually, so I put a bit of sugar in there. It's just crazy how much sugar's in this stuff. Uh, white wine vinegar. Um, half a teaspoon, so I'm just going to go here. One, it's already quite vinegary, so I'm not going to get too carried away. I'm just going to go a bit of that, and then here we go. The, the, the smaller things, so we get a teaspoon measure here. Where's a teaspoon? Paprika, I love paprika. 
half a teaspoon of paprika, so let's go one and a half, because I've gone three times. Onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder, I never used to have them in my repertoire. Um, they're really worth having in your repertoire. They, they, they add some really good things. I use them in a lot of my southern fried uh, bits and pieces. And they just, you know, I just add some good, good, good flavor without having the astringency of the fresh stuff. So that's all that. And then whisk it. And there we go, that is Big Mac sauce. That's how um, simple that is, but let's just see if that's up to scratch. Tell you what, pretty bloody good. All right, there you go, sauce and burgers done. That's what the burgers look like too when they're finished. All nice up and lined up, perfect. All right, see you soon. Okay, so we've got burgers done. Well, we haven't got burgers done yet. We're about to put them together. We've got the buns done, we've got the meat done, we've got the sauce done. What have we got next? Not my usual cup, I know. I'd like a glass of milk today, icy cold. Recommend if you're drinking milk, whack some ice in there. Oh, tell you what. What's that doing? Well, I got product, found product yesterday. Still looks ridiculous. Anyway, what have we got left? We've got to chop ourselves up a bit of lettuce, so we need a bit of iceberg. I freaking love iceberg. People just write it off as the shit watery lettuce. It's crisp. Has crispness to things. I like it. I really like iceberg. I'd like to say I like the flavour of iceberg. That might be going too far. Might not have a flavour, but I like it. All right. White onion. You need that diced. So basically, we're going to be building this. It's burger bun sauce. So we've got all bottled up like a professional, like I am. Um, I'm going to put a bit of diced onion. It's meant to be white onion, and I ordered white onions. And what they did was, my sneaky, sneaky veggie people sent me brown onions that they peeled. So that's what it turned up. Yes, it is a white onion, so I'm gonna have a look. I haven't even, do you know what? I haven't even rang them up and had a go at them. Cause I'm like, I know I'm gonna get, it's white. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not a white onion. Just cause the color of something doesn't make it the thing. All right, so once again, very prevalent in the world at the moment. Got nothing to do with color people. It's about what's on the inside. See what I did there? Like that. Anyway, so we need to chiffon out some lettuce. Sounds very fancy. Chiffon out just means any if it's in a leaf and you're gonna cut it into a small sort of section, a strip, chiffon out. We're gonna dice or fine brunoise. No, 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 we're gonna get, tell you on the technical terms. It's fine dice of white onion. Some gherkins. I've got some jarred gherkins because once again, I, 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 I just couldn't be asked. So someone gave me these anyway. Uh, these are long slice, sandwich slices. Never even seen sandwich slices, they're cool. Gonna have to cut them anyway. We want a couple of them. And then the patties, and then some cheese. Now the cheese. The cheese is important. Um, and I love cheese, anyone that knows me, and knows Lauren knows, we're all about the fromage. I have gone out and found myself rubbish orange cheese. I think they're called American cheese slices. A little bit plasticky. It may, may not have anything from an animal in it. It may not have milk in it. Let's have a look, is it real, is it real cheese? Yeah. Well, cheese is in the ingredient list. So there's a start. It's got cheese in it. I don't often expect my cheese's ingredients list, the first thing to be on the list, cheese. Because it's usually the stuff that makes up cheese. But the largest component of this stuff is cheese. So, mm, I do really like it, I'm not gonna lie. So I got that, the patty, the cheese, I'm melted. Um, then we'll do the build. Bread rolls, I'll get to them in a minute. But all we're gonna do is some chiffonade and some dicing of some onion now. All right, so quickly, you can get an iceberg and it, that peel sticks out enough, you can actually just smash it and it comes out as like one whole piece. 
Although they get, seem to be getting tighter and tighter as the world goes on. Um, so the middle of the lettuce is going to be a little bit yellow and um, nothing really wrong with that for a lot of salads, but it's not really burger, burgerable. So I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to use all that middle bit. There's a bit of brown there. You know what? Not the nicest iceberg in the world. I will use the other stuff myself, but like, I'll chiffonade that up even finer and I'll use that in a, um, in a salad. Alright, shit bits off. All, right, all I do with this is, I roll it up. A big green cigar, not those kind of green cigars, people. Uh, I'm gonna give it a bit of a chop because I don't want it, I want it nice and loose for sitting inside the burger, so that's cool. Chuck that on there. So. Now, chopping lettuce, I must have cut myself more chopping lettuce than anything else. So, because you want to start doing this and chomp it, chomp, be wary of where your other hand is, people. Like, I, I can't say it enough. I've cut myself more with lettuce than anything else. So that's your lettuce out of the way. Lettuce pray. All right. Now the onion. The white onion, so they tell me. Look, and even because they've peeled it, I'm gonna have to peel off the extra layer, because I don't, I don't like getting peeled onions in, I like to peel my own onion. Kind of keeps it nice and fresh. You know what, you want a nice... You see my onion there? Yeah, we're in there. usually a cooked onion man inside my burgers but because we're sticking with the uh the premise of trying to emulate you know everyone's favorite takeaway look and there's your diced onion so diced white onion chiffonade of lettuce we're good now these pickles just gonna cut them into bits like that uh, i'll grab a whole bunch um, just at a little bit more like the actual size of the ones in the burgers. Nice and simple. It's a good brand of pickle old uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. L's water or L's wood, whatever. Cool. They can go in there too. How's that? Okay, a couple of things. So, heating of the buns. Yeah, I've just cut my thumb, by the way. Cut my thumb cutting chips. So it does happen to all of us. Let me call blue band-aid on. In fact, on top of my blue band-aid, I am gonna put a glove on, actually, to be fair. And that's not because I'm cooking for anyone, because I'm just cooking this for me. But, I equally, don't wanna get my little cut hurt. All right, so, let me glove on. Whoop, whoop. This is the bread roll. So this is my Big Mac burger bun I made. It's a nice and high-sided. Um, you can heat this up at home. I'd heat them up gently in the microwave, which is, I think, what McDonald's do. Um, I'm actually going to put them in a steamer because I've got a steamer and I'm going to do a few for some friends at the time. So cut the base off to get yourself a nice level, level playing ground, and that's going to be the base of your Big McNish. All right, and then get yourself a nice middle part of the burger, nice and even. It's the middle part, and you want a nice bun for the top. So for me. Mine's a bit lopsided, so I can see mine's gonna be fine. I'm actually just gonna straighten mine up. So I've just got a nice sesame seed bun. There we go, so I've straightened them up a little bit. So there's the base, there's the middle section, there's me top, all right? I'm actually gonna steam it in a steamer tray, cover it with a bit of cling film, so they'll be nice and soft. But you can just uh, microwave them, so that's cool. So that's your bun component. And then baking off of the, uh, the burger patties, there we are, so I need two of them. I'm not gonna use them, I'm not gonna pan fry them because uh, I think I might just lose a bit too much. So I've got myself a tray with a bit of grease proof. I've actually got some silamat on the top, but you could use grease proof. Um, and then, get yourself into your bag, which is just hard enough. Um, peel that off and you've got this beautiful burger on the tray. Same again. on the tray. I'm gonna bake them off 
at 200 degrees in my oven for eight minutes or six minutes and have a look. I think they should be done. And we'll just drop a, a slice of cheese on each one and they're done too. So I'm gonna get back with some components for you. Turn that off. Okay, the exciting time, putting it together. All right. So, the base of my bun and the next layer to be top. Burger patty's all ready to go. All right, so let's go. A little bit of sauce. Tiny, few little bit of raw white onion. Not much, they don't have much going on there. Two bits of pickle on each side, I'm thinking, is uh, all they've ever gone. Let's get that in there. A little handful of uh, iceberg. too much, it does always fall out by the time you get it, but I just want to get that perfectly sort of uh, sorted. And your all beef patties, look at that. All beef patty, perfectly melted cheese here. I'm gonna go a little bit of sauce on the lid, I don't even know whether they do or not. That was a big decision for me, so that goes halfway there. So, there's your Big Mac in all of its glory. I mean, look at that. That's a big Mac and a half. But you know what? I just don't think that would be fine. So, I'm gonna get some fries. So I've got some fries. Let's put the Big Mac in a box. So, before I get sued, I'm not selling these, these are just for fun. So we've got McNish's, hello. A big Mac burger goes in there. It's big McNish. All right, so the top of the Big McNish. So the Big McNish, no drive throughs were hurt in the making of this burger. And we'll get the lid on, so that's one, one lid to go on. We'll sort that out in the box. Put another one here for some fries. Get that in there. Top up with some fries. Of course, McNish's fries. Get that in there, close me box up. There we are. Of course, none of these are going to be fine unless we have them in a bag. So, all in the McNish Beal bag. In the bag it goes. Big McNish burger. McNish fries. Here we go, and we're off. Happy days. Woo woo!